By the end of this video, you'll know how to analyze your qualitative data, regardless of whether you want to do it manually or use any of the available software packages, regardless of the kind of data that you have, such as focus group data, interview data, or maybe open-ended question responses, regardless of the methodology you're thinking of using, such as granite theory or thematic analysis. And also, if you're thinking about any specific existing approaches, such as Brown and Clark's six-step framework, Again, this video is still very much relevant and will help you start analyzing your data right after you're done watching it. So specifically in this video, I'll very briefly explain what qualitative data is. Then I'll talk about what is the overall goal. What do we need from qualitative data analysis? And then I'll walk you through this uh, framework that's almost universally applicable to, as I said earlier, to any methodology, any kind of data any kind of approach to data analysis. So very briefly, what is qualitative research or qualitative data? Of course, it's data that is not numerical, not statistical. So any sort of data that usually expresses some sort of opinion or experience and uh, to some extent is a, is a subjective experience or opinion, whether it's been expressed by somebody in an interview in a focus group more often than not, or even if it's a document stating something, it's still it can be argued that it's still some sort of an expression of some sort of a subjective opinion because somebody had to write it. In any case, what is important is that it's not numerical, it's not statistical. So what is the purpose of qualitative data analysis then? Of course, the purpose, the main purpose is always to answer the research question as in any other study. So this is obvious. But because it's qualitative data and because as we establish, it's some sort of a subjective expression of opinion usually, we cannot, of course, uh, test uh, results, we cannot uh, measure performance, we cannot rely on statistics in this kind of study. Instead, we are relying on some sort of expression of opinion, which means that uh, the overall purpose to get to that main overarching purpose of answering the research question is to somehow distill these opinions or these experiences from the data that we've gathered. So our main aim for now to get to this final goal of answering the research questions is to distill uh, these opinions from all this volume of the data that we have. So in other words, we have to reduce the volume of that data. That's the main purpose of qualitative data analysis, to reduce the volume of the data and to distill these opinions and to do it in a systematic way. Final product is some sort of a, of a framework, a group of uh, I'll call it themes, and more often than not, that's how people refer to them. So a group of uh, major topics or major patterns running through the data. These patterns are present in the data and they are relevant to our research question. So this is how we present the answers. We answer the research questions by presenting to the reader the list of these main recurring topics or themes and then usually the corresponding sub themes. So basically, uh, when you think about it, it's a common sense thing to do. If somebody wants to know something that's in our data, we go to our data and dig out these views and then present these views as a list of clear topics or bullet points or as a framework. But to make sure that these findings are valid, so the whole process is something that's credible, we have to do it in a systematic way. And that's where qualitative data analysis uh, comes into play. So how do we get to this point where we have these final themes? How do we do it systematically? How do we reduce the, uh, the volume of that data systematically? You probably heard the term codes and coding the data because that's exactly what we need to do first. So we have to code our data, all of it. So what coding really means is assigning low labels or low descriptions, or sometimes I even call them low summaries, to basically everything that we're reading in our data, everything that's been said or everything that's been written. These little labels, these codes are becoming our insight into what's in the data. Later, as I explain what we'll do in, in the second stage of this process of coding, we will use these little summaries or these little codes as our indication of what our data is about. So we'll kind of try to construct something out of them. We'll see, for example, how often or how many codes refer to a certain topic, and then we can group them into this topic. Then this gives us indication that, for example, the topic of negative experiences at work is something that's pretty prevalent, uh, prevalent in our data. But to know that, we do have to have these codes first that will give us this indication. So, so the process generally starts with assigning these uh, these units of an, of meaning to, to what we're reading. We're, we are creating codes. If you're using software, you're going to be scrolling through the data and just selecting certain sentences. Usually, sometimes uh, it can be a piece of a sentence, a full sentence. Sometimes it can be a little paragraph and a few sentences. 
uh, but uh, in any case it's something meaningful as we're reading we're as uh, we're deciding what to call this paragraph or this sentence that we just uh, read then if you're doing this manually you can do the same with just a, a piece of paper and, and a highlighter or a pencil and again you're circling maybe a sentence and next to it you're writing in your own words something that's basically a condensed and distilled way to express what you just read what that sentence uh, talks about i do have videos in which i also explain how to use microsoft word for this so there is always a way to do it once you understand what you need from this process there's always a way to use whatever uh, your available resources are so for now this is the process you're just uh, reading everything that you have and creating these codes these little tags or little summaries of what's being said in that data which results in a moment when you're done with all these transcripts and now you have plenty of codes if you're using software there are just probably a long list of codes if you have separate pieces of paper then again you have all these transcripts printed out each one containing uh, your text and then loads and loads of codes now the next stage is to make sense of this because they are still uh, either a bunch of random codes or a collection of different documents with codes on uh, written on them but the goal is to see them together because we are building we're trying to establish that good understanding of what's in our data not in every individual transcript but we're trying to develop this holistic view of our data this is how these codes are important and useful to us so in the next stage you need a way to transfer all these codes into one place again if you're using software then usually it's just naturally how it's organized if you have different pieces of paper or maybe different word documents you have to start copying and pasting these codes into one document because you want to see all of them in one place even if initially it will be uh, and it will look and feel very messy because it will be very messy at this point just a quick note before i continue don't forget to explore my services including support and data analysis so this can be based as usual on my zoom consultations one-to-one -one sessions where we can talk about your data analysis your study i can look at your codes or guide you through the process and also i have a separate service where i do the data analysis for you and then produce a detailed report of the findings so if you're interested in that have a look at my website and otherwise let's get back to the topic of this video but anyway now we're basically halfway through the whole process we have covered our data and codes now we have all these codes and now we move them all into this one container or file or wherever we are storing the codes now uh, the goal is to remember to understand our data so to make sense of these codes uh, and and what they are telling us what the data is telling us and this is a process quite often referred to as focused coding or axial coding but as i said at the beginning of this video it doesn't really matter because i don't want to overwhelm you with these different terms because then you have brown and clark six stage process and uh, believe me they are all almost universally the same because regardless of this approach or methodology the goal is always the same we have these codes and we want to start building some uh, groups of codes out of what we have at the moment remember I said it's, it's messy we have lots of codes so basically this stage uh, contains common sense understanding and common sense decisions you see lots of codes and they are random because remember you're just covering everything that you saw with codes so now we have codes about positive experiences at work negative experiences you have codes about the favorite uh, day at work that somebody remembered you have codes about some background information maybe a uh, family background uh, some emotions that I experienced, maybe coping strategies that they described. Of course, it depends on the study. I'm just giving you loads of random examples, but you have all these different codes and they are so random. So how is it going to help us develop these final themes? The way it will help us develop the final themes is through these common sense decisions. You see these codes and you just move them together, group them th uh, together. So if I see lots of codes about emotions, I'll create this group. Again, does not matter if I did manually, if I just write it down on a piece of paper, uh, cut it out from my uh, printed uh, printed uh, transcripts maybe I have a separate file in Microsoft Word or maybe I'm using data analysis software again it doesn't matter you have to find a way to just group them and move them aside so all the codes that have to do with emotions all the codes that have to do with positive experiences negative experiences background information what you're doing and I often use this comparison in my videos you're basically creating a table of contents of your data a detailed table of contents that tells you everything that there is to know about your data and all the different topics that all these different people have uh, explored and described in the interviews if of course we're talking about an interview study i often 
assume that and I use that as my examples, but same thing would happen if you have if you have documents, same thing would happen if you have comments, uh, open ended comments in a questionnaire, you're building that table of contents of your data, something that you can rely on, rather than your own hunches and observations. After reading all these uh, different uh, transcripts, interview transcripts, or maybe after having conducted interviews, now you have a systematic way to build this table of contents of every topic that was discussed in your data. And this is crucial in order to be able uh, to develop your final themes, your final answers to your research questions. So in this process of focus coding, so stage two of coding, uh, apart from organizing these codes, which is the main the main process, the main way you're building that understanding, what also happens is you're also reducing the volume of the codes already. And they are becoming more focused, hence one of the names for this process, uh, focus coding, you're reducing the numbers of codes, because as you move them into these common groups, quite often, you realize that you have several codes that are very similar, they come from different interviews, and you created similar codes. So like, I may have created a code, self confidence, and then self confidence is important. And maybe for somebody else, I created a code, she was very self confident. And for somebody else, I created a code, self confidence is what helped her a lot. So now at the second stage at the second stage where I'm uh, moving all these into one one group, let's say, you know, important facilitators or strategies, or maybe characteristics, or maybe emotions, whatever I call it, I may realize, oh, I have four or five different codes about self confidence, I don't need to have that. So I'll just merge them into one again, something that's much easier if you're using software. Uh, but there are also other ways to do it. And then finally, the final stage, and it will be the shortest in my in my description, which is funny, because it sounds like probably the most overwhelming and complex stage of all, where the reality is that usually it does tend to be the easiest one uh, to carry out It's the easiest one because the whole work, the heavy lifting was to cover all this data and codes, and then to develop all these groups. And now you're looking at this table of contents. And it's clearly showing you and telling you everything that there is uh, in your data, everything that's present in your data, whether it's relevant or not, because at the focus coding stage, you're not really trying to make these decisions just yet, you just wanted to move things uh, away aside and to organize it into groups. And now you're looking at all these groups, all this table of contents, all the uh, stuff that you have in your data. And now you're looking at your research questions and thinking, how can I answer these research questions, and you will be surprised how clear usually at this stage, uh, the answers are becoming because remember now through this whole process, you have developed a very thorough and a very good understanding of everything that there is in your data. So the final thing to do is again, just to look at your research questions and think, how do I answer them? And usually, the way you present that answer in your mind first, as I also often explain that it's good to even imagine yourself now, given a presentation, or maybe engage in a, in a five minute free writing exercise where you're just writing about the answer and everything you know, without much concern for grammar or anything else or any structure, uh, whatever way you did, it, it's important to imagine and kind of visualize the answers at this stage, just think of how do I answer these research questions. And then when you have this uh, in your in your mind, this vision, this answer in your mind, turn back to your focus codes to your table of contents and think, where did I get that from? Where is the evidence for what I just said for these answers? So these final answers to my research questions is what usually we call themes. So these major topics. So if in my study of let's say nurses experiences, one of the major things they discuss were the challenges they face, challenges are probably going to be one of my themes, if they also talked about the, the strategies or coping strategies that help them. I know that coping strategies would probably be another one of my themes that I want to discuss if it helps me answer the research questions, then underneath the, the theme of coping strategies, I want to actually list the coping strategies. So usually this is called sub themes, sometimes people call it codes or categories or whatever else it doesn't really matter. But we're building uh, our answers to the research questions through uh, clearly showing these major topics. And again, we can do it with confidence now because remember, our building blocks, our evidence is all there in that table of contents that we built through coding for initial coding, and then engaging focus coding where we organize these codes. So all we have to do now is communicate these answers through our main themes, and then take the evidence look for evidence to support these themes 
in our data. And we do this by using our table of contents again, our all the coding, everything we've built and tracing them back to the original source. So tracing back to the quotes, which we can now use to demonstrate uh, our points as we're talking about our results. I do have a separate video in which I talk about how to present the results of qualitative data analysis. You can obviously watch it if you want to know more about this aspect. And if you're still wondering after watching this video, but I chose Brown and Clark's approach and they have six steps and you talked about basically three major stages in the analysis. How do I go about that? I do have a video in which I address this specific question. So this is it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the process, feel free to post them in the comments. I always try to respond to your questions. Like the video if you learned something new, share it with others if you know somebody who can benefit from it and consider subscribing if you're new around here.